What up guys, Charles Mabe here with a fix for the iMac. Uh, if you hear some cheering in the background, apparently there's some Jesse White tumblers outside my house right now. If you don't know what that is, you can look it up. There's some kind of block party going on or something, so I'm not out there participating because I'm in here doing this. Hang on one second while I get myself a beer. Okay, let's do some talking here. All right, so this is my 2010 iMac. It's the same iMac that had an issue with the screen that uh, I never show this, but so that, these iMacs had an issue where there was a piece that connected to the screen and the solder would melt on it and the piece would come loose and the screen would start to kind of blink out and go black occasionally and whatnot. It has nothing to do with this because this is a brand new screen. Uh, I replaced it a long time ago, like I don't know, forever ago, three years after I got it or something like that. Uh, but uh, so basically, what's going on with this? What's going on with the screen was now this computer now was is every couple of ten minutes something hour occasionally it would all of a sudden just go to black screen. You'd be sitting there using it, and then all of a sudden it would just be like whoop, like that. Oh, screen's gone. What happened? I don't know. It's just gone. So I was like, okay, crap. And this started happening more and more frequently, and just kept continually happening, and then it got to the point where. It would do it every 10 seconds. And the only way for me to bring it back to life would be to put the, put the computer to sleep, turn it back on, and then the screen would come back on. But then, it would, it, sometimes originally, in the first half when it started happening, it would work. And it would stay on for an hour, two hours, three hours, eight hours sometimes, depending on how long I needed to use it. And it was staying on, no problem. But then it kept happening every, literally, like every 10 seconds. I turned it on, boom. Every turn on, boom. And so I had to keep putting it to sleep and redoing it, redoing it. Yada, 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 yada. Let me drink another sip of my beer here. So every, every 10 seconds kept happening, right? Well, I freaked out because, you know, I could buy a new computer, but let's see if I can fix it first because why waste money on a new computer if this one's still working just fine? What I noticed was is that on my external monitor, my external monitor showed that the computer was still on, and if I was playing music or something in the background, it was still on. I could hear that it was still on, but this screen was going black, and it was happening all the time, and I'm like, this is annoying. So I look online, and I'm like, okay, so let's see what we've got on this old interwebs here and see what they have to say for me. And people suggested, like, can you see the screen in the background? Uh, I don't know, it's a black, what do I mean? So uh, you take a light, you can use a light on your phone, and I was able to do it with that, or uh, if you have a really bright flashlight, and hold it up to the screen, and you'll see that there are still windows in the background, or you can still see that, like, I can see, like, my files are still open, or whatever was still open, so I knew the computer was on, it's just the screen was black. What's the issue, though? All right, so here's what I did. I took the computer apart, and I noticed, first thing I noticed is that there was a lot of dust accumulated over the years in there. It was pretty dusty all around like the heat sink thing here in this area and there's one up in that area the fans were coated in dust so I took a little brush and cleaned everything off and got it all nice and neat put it back together and it worked for about a month and it was like alright nothing's really happening again so okay so maybe that was the issue oh then it started happening again okay crap so that's not the issue ah what to do what to do well of course take it apart again and I'm looking at it and I'm like alright let's see here let's see here okay this is what's going on here it's all clean whatever put it back together um, what I noticed was this, when it would go dark, if I turn the brightness down, and I, depending on what kind of keyboard you're using, if you're using like an old school keyboard, uh, it's F14, F15, F15 is brightness, uh, F14 lowers the brightness, or if you have a newer keyboard, which usually comes with this, but who knows what you're using, uh, you have the wireless keyboard, there's actually brightness keys on there. When the screen would go black, I would turn, here's some people cheering out there and clapping, um, when the screen would go black, I would turn the brightness down, right? I was like, let's see what happens. Let's just see what happens here. Turn the brightness down, turn it back on. Lo and behold, when you turn it back on, the screen, make sure it doesn't go to sleep, the screen, hey, it's on our boob, the screen would stay on. Uh, and then I noticed, okay, if I start turning up the brightness slowly, let's see what happens. As I turn the brightness up slowly, once I hit a certain point, about five or six on the brightness meter, the computer would go black again. I was like, okay, well, so clearly, it's not the computer itself. Well, it is, but it isn't. It's not like an issue with like a hardware or like I had reset, whatever people keep saying, reset this, reset that. It wasn't that issue at all. The issue was, was the inverter because basically what was happening is something had gone wrong and my guess is this, it's the best guess, so I'm not 100% positive, but here's my best guess. Because the computer is so dirty in there and the fans probably weren't working properly and the heat sinks were covered in um, dust and whatnot, that it wasn't dissipating heat properly. The fact that it didn't dissipate the heat properly probably caused the inverter to overheat and the computer itself to overheat, which probably meant that it warped something inside uh, on the inverter itself or on the actual soldering uh, pins because I've noticed, I don't know where I just put it, but um, on the pins of the, on the old inverter that I switched out, 
around, oh, here it is, around the edges, um, it's a little dark, or it's a little yellow around the edges of the pen. So my guess is something overheated there. So, what do you have to do? You have to buy yourself an inverter first. Here's the inverter right here, you can see it, this is it right here. It's going to be right here in this corner of your screen, right back there. Um, you'll notice right here on these pins, I don't know if you can see that, probably not, because um, I'm putting my hand in the way, but right here there's pins on, this, on the inverter right here. Um, and they're, they're yellow around the solder, solder, so, and I know it's on the new inverter, it's not. So I guess something's going wrong with that. That part also is what connects to the screen itself. So that's my guess. So to take the screen apart, well first off, make sure, make sure this is the issue because don't, there's no point in taking your computer apart and doing all this work if it's not the issue. So if your computer is going to black screen frequently, turn the brightness all the way down. Shut the computer, to, or put the computer to sleep, start it back up. If it stays on with the brightness, do, brightness down, this is probably your issue. As you slowly turn the brightness up and it turns off, that's probably your issue. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to pull the screen off, the outside screen of the computer off. How do you do that? With a suction cup like this, and you pull the suction cup on the screen, pull it off. There's that part. Get that part off. Then you're going to have screws around the outside part of the screen. I want to say there's seven to eight screws located down the right and left sides here. Do not mess the screws on top. You don't need to take those out. Just the ones on this side here. You're also going to notice that there are magnets which help hold the, out, the outer protective screen on. And so the screws, take your time with this because the screws will get stuck to those magnets. It helps you if you have a magnetized screwdriver to pull them out because that would hopefully keep the screws from falling out. However, the screws will get stuck to these occasionally. So take your time. Once those are out, the screen easily lifts off. I find if you put a screwdriver right up here in these top corners, all you have to do is take that, push out a little bit, the screen will start to pull out. As the screen pulls out, only pull the screen out about an inch and look down inside there. What you're going to notice is there's three to four wires that are attached to the back of the screen and to the inside of the computer. So obviously you're going to have to take all these wires out, or undo all the wires before you can pull the screen out. Don't just pull the screen out because you're going to pull the wires out with it and you're going to have a bigger issue on your hands and you don't want that. So, once you get all of those wires out, you're going to find your inverter right up here in the top left hand corner, literally right here. It's super, super, super easy to replace. There's only four screws holding the inverter in. Undo, well don't undo the, first, the screws first. There's two wires that are attached to the inverter, one on the back side in the top upper right hand corner. Uh, it's like a six pin cable and one on the very bottom which is a big flat uh, cable. The big flat cable on the bottom has a clasp on it. You can undo that right there, Boop, pop it out. You then can hopefully wiggle off the top wire in the back. There is a clasp on that as well. If you can't get to it, you can unscrew it to get to it. Um, I was able to slide mine right out. But otherwise, you can do the screw. You can do it all, undo all four screws, and then pop that out. That's all there is to the inverter. Once that's out, put the new inverter in, attach the cables, screw it back into place. You're good to go. You can get the inverters on eBay uh, for around fifteen dollars. I think I got mine with like for like twelve dollars the shipping. Uh, totally worth it. I don't recommend, especially if you're working with a computer like the 2009, 2010, 2011 model. It's already an old computer, so there's no real point in buying a new inverter and spending a bunch of money on an old computer. Plus, a lot of these computers have been scrapped by this point, so it's easy to find used parts. Uh, what I've learned is the on the 2010 model, the, the inverter code is V267-602HF. However, the, the V267-604HF will also work for the 2010 computer. Uh, and I find that's easier to find than the 602. Um, so don't be afraid to get the 604, and you can actually get those pretty cheap. Uh, I, I went for a 602, got it, but the 602 and 604 are pretty interchangeable and they'll work just fine. You'll know what I'm, you'll know what I'm saying uh, if you look in the computer and open it up and you'll see. Also, if you don't have a 2010, 2011 model, whatever, when you open it up the computer, the inverter, like I said, is on the top left-hand screen. There's going to be a barcode on there with a V267 something on there. 
Look at that and make sure you find the right one or the one that will be compatible with your computer. Uh, once that's done, put all the screws back in, or put, put attach all the wires, put the screws back in, and or even if you want to, just in case you didn't get a wire attached properly, attach all the wires, put the screen back, turn it on, see what happens. If, it, if it's on, cool. If something's still not maybe not connected properly, you can pull the screen back out for, instead of putting all the screws back in first. That's what I did here, so my screen's not completely attached yet. Uh, but basically, it was, it was really simple. I just took it out and put a new inverter in, and it seemed to work properly. It's, uh, it's crazy that uh, it, it took me so long to kind of figure out, and I've seen so many people on message boards like, oh, my computer's doing this, it's doing this, and everyone's like, oh, redo this, redo this, redo this. Before you reset anything, just check your brightness. Turn your brightness down, see if it stays on. If that's the case, and it turns off as it goes brighter, it's the inverter, it's a power issue. Guys, when it gets too high, it's shutting itself down. So just change the inverter, switch it out, and you're fine. So there you go, folks. It's a little long-winded. It's a little bit of a long description. But this way, you don't have to ask a million questions about why it's not, why isn't it working. Well, did you try the first things first? Because if you didn't try that, then maybe that's not your issue. But if you try that first, brightness first, it's probably your issue. Uh, if you have questions, you can ask, but at least try the brightness first. Because I'm not going to answer questions that are like, my computer monitor doesn't work at all when I turn it on. It hasn't worked for days, and I don't know why. It doesn't even turn on at all. Well, then that, uh, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about a computer screen that goes to black. That's all we got here, folks. That's it. Uh, so that's how you fix your black screen on your iMac. If you have questions, feel free. Please like and subscribe. hope this video is helpful for you because uh, it sucks not having a computer. Enjoy, guys.